Welcome to another episode of Famitsu Check It Out. This is for the date of May 1st, 2020. Uh, we have our copy of Famitsu here, and we're going to take a look at it. Uh, in Japan, this week is what's called Golden Week, uh, and it's a special set of holidays that all happen right around the same time, and people are given some extra time off. And so this is a big time for traveling around, so um, ideally it'd be a big, a big time to buy some portable games for kids to sit in their uh, family car and go around Japan to some place. Um, because of the coronavirus, uh, that's probably not happening as uh, much as in past years. Uh, I have seen a fair number of, of Japanese people out and about, um, but yeah. So, um, so yeah, look at this uh, new issue of Famitsu. Uh, we can see that this is the 10 year anniversary for the Nier series. Um, the latest version, Nier uh, Automata, came to uh, Game Pass recently, and that's on my list of games that I'd like to try out. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, open it up and check it out. Um, the first thing that we'll talk about this week is, yeah, why don't we take a look at this? Uh, this is the, uh, Famitsu and Dengeki had a game award show, um, a couple of weeks ago, and these are the winners here. Um, so let's just look at these. Uh, most, most valuable creator was won by, um, uh, Hideo Kojima, um, the best scenario was given to 13 Centennials. Uh, best graphics was Death Stranding. Uh, best music was given to Persona 5 The Royal. Um, best character, uh, Sam Porter. Um, Sam Porter Bridges from Death Stranding. Uh, best online game is uh, for Final Fantasy XIV, the online game. Uh, best action game was Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, best shooter is Apex Legends. Uh, best action adventure game, Death Stranding. Uh, best adventure game was 13 Centennials. Best RPG, uh, Pokemon Sword Shield. Uh, best uh, indie game, Unosia. I'm not, I'm not really sure what that is. I'll have to look that up after this. Um, best rookie game. Uh, so the game that's not a, uh, a sequel of any kind is Death Stranding. Uh, uh, best esports is Fortnite. And best... Uh, oh, best streamer is uh, Unko-chan. Unko-chan to you. Kato, and I'm terrible at reading first names. Uh, interestingly enough, down here they have best games in China. So best creator was uh, Kojima again, and best game in China was Sekiro uh, Shadows Die Twice. I didn't even know that they did that. Um, And then it says that Famitsu Dengeki Special Award goes to um, Dragon Quest Walk and Ring Fit Adventure. Uh, I'm not really sure what that means. And then the game of the year was Pokemon Sword and Shield. So not, not really too surprised by that. So that, that was from the award show that they had a couple of weeks ago. Um, I think you can still catch it on YouTube. So... You have any interest in that and you can speak Japanese I'm not really sure if it's subtitled or not so we were missing this last week and I felt like kind of half of me was gone uh, so this week uh, we're gonna look at the top 20 top, top 30 games in Japan um, number one as I I knew last week would happen uh, Final Fantasy 7 remake uh, is the biggest game in Japan uh, next in the Number two spot is going to be uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Uh, number three is Resident Evil 3. 
Uh, number four, uh, surprisingly, is Mario Kart Del uh, 8 Deluxe. That's been like moving up in the rankings quite steadily, and it kind of surprises me. Uh, number five is uh, One Piece, the, uh, the uh, Musou game for the PlayStation 4. Number six is the Switch version. Number seven is Smash Brothers. Number eight, Ring Fit Adventure. Number nine is Pokemon Sword and Shield. And then number 10 is uh, Super Mario Party, another uh, game that's kind of moved up. Uh, we still see that uh, the uh, Animal Crossing for 3DS is still pretty high up on the list. Um, I'm still pretty surprised by that. Um, everything else is, um, is an old game, so we don't really need to talk about any of that. Um, the next thing let's go to is the most anticipated games. So over here, these are the most anticipated games in Japan. Number one is the Tales of Arise. Number two is the new Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild game. Uh, number three, Cyberpunk 2077. Number four is Ghosts of Tsushima. And number five is Bayonetta 3. Um, there's only one new addition to this list. Uh, number 27, the PlayStation 4 version of eBaseball Power, uh, Power Pro Baseball 2020. Um, yeah, so last last month the uh, Switch version was on, so the PlayStation 4 version made it onto the list this time. Um, next thing we'll talk about is the uh, rookie games, the top 10 rookies. Um, just like I said in the, um, the Game Awards, when, when they say rookie in Japanese, what it means is that this is an original IP. There's no, uh, there's no sequel, prequel, or anything like that, so... Uh, number one is Ushiro. Um, I think it's almost like a uh, a uh, joke anymore that this is on the list. Um, I think Ushiro has been on this list for at least five years. Um, it's a game that was originally supposed to come out for maybe PlayStation Two, I'm not, or PlayStation Three, maybe. Um, but it definitely was supposed to come out on Vita. Um, so, yeah, but uh, they're deciding to make a Switch version. It's a game that's uh, uh, developed by Level 5 Games, the people behind um, Nino Kuni and uh, Yokai Watch. And so they're making this game called Ushiro, and it's just been in development hell for forever. Um, so, like I said, I think it's almost a joke that it's on this list anymore. Uh, the next game on the list is uh, Ghost of uh, Tsushima. Um, that's done by the, uh, I think Sly Cooper guys, Sly Cooper people. Um, so yeah, looks good. Uh, number three, Cyberpunk 2077. Number four is the game that I never know how to say. Ten, ten show, ten kyo no sakuna hime. Uh, number five is Elden Ring. And, you know, we don't need to go any farther than that. Most everything is, uh, is where it's been in the last few weeks so uh got me a cup of coffee here today um all right let's move on uh let's see i don't know anything about this game but uh looks like it's called out buddies dx um looks like an indie title um Head Up Games is the name of the developer, it looks like. It's a download game, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Switch. Uh, I really like these uh, screens. Um, this one in particular looks really nice. Uh, I like the 16-bit the uh, look of this game. Uh, I don't really know anything about it, but I kind of like the dark, uh, the, the dark look of the game. Uh, over here, uh, it looks like there's going to be co-op play on this. Um, just by looking at the screens, it looks like maybe some kind of Metroidvania kind of thing. Uh, let's check the genre that's written over here. Yeah, it says it's an action game, so probably going to be Metroidvania if uh, we look at this uh, map that's uh, right here. Yeah, it says right here, Metroid. Nani <laughs> yori mo Metroid ni... Chiji? Chiji? Oji? 
na Metroid Vania. Yeah. Even in Japanese, they use the word Metroid Vania. I never knew that. So, um, yeah, that looks really good. Uh, first time I've he heard of it. So, uh, this looks gorgeous as well. Um, a space for the unbound. Uh, Xbox, PlayStation 4, Switch. Uh, Mi Miji Ken Studio, Tokei Productions. Looks like the the producer is Chorus World uh, Chorus Worldwide. Not really sure. Yeah. Nineteen nineties Indonesia is the place. It's an adventure game. So I wonder if this uh, studio is uh, is Indonesian. Published by Chorus Worldwide, yeah. Developed by Mijiken Studios. Moj Mojiken Studio. Yeah. Looks good. Looks really interesting. Um, when does it come out? This winter, it says, it comes out. So, interesting. Uh, we've talked about this game a couple of times, uh, Brigadine. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever seen uh, Brigadine. Uh, from the original PlayStation. But I never played the game, but I was always very interested in hexagonal hexa hexagonal uh maps like this. I always thought that they looked really interesting, uh very challenging, but I never got past the phase of just picking up the game box at my local blockbuster and looking at it and saying wow that looks cool but it looks really complicated <laughs> so um yeah i'm i'm somewhat excited for this new brigadine 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 yeah however you say it um but yeah for the past few weeks they've had some information in here uh spottingly about this game um i i really like some of these uh um artist renditions that they have here uh for this game uh yeah the uh, monsters and uh abilities look pretty cool uh over here we have remnant uh from the ashes uh looks like that's coming out in japan uh june 25th i believe it's already out in america um i don't really know much about this game uh, i think it's like a survival survival horror game says action here is the genre I see life bars on monsters so I wonder if it's maybe something closer to um, uh, what is that what is that game the really popular one um, what's that game for some reason, the only thing I can think of is uh, God Eater, but it's the better one of that. Monster Hunter. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, it looks like it looks like maybe Monster Hunter type thing. Uh, small indie game. It looks like uh, adventure RPG called Origin of Adventure here. Um, Arc System Works is the producer. And probably the developer as well, since there's nothing written under developer. Looks like it's some kind of a adventure game. Yeah, probably not something that'll be localized, because it looks like there's a lot of a lot of text in here. And um, if it turns out to be some kind of like dating simulator or something like that, then I doubt it's gonna come here. Uh, what else do we got? Happy Elements 10th Anniversary. I'm not really sure what this Happy Elements is. I think it's a studio. Yeah, a mobile game studio. So I'm sure that they've probably had a lot of games in Japan. Yeah, all of these games in this feature area, the Happy Games, Happy Elements area, are all uh, Android, iOS games. So, um, I like. I like mobile games, but I just cannot ever get into the system. And Japanese P 
people tend to love the gotcha system and so those games do really well here but um anytime i've ever tried to get into them i get into them for at most like a week maybe two and then i just fall off because i think that like i have this desire to get everything in games like gotta catch them all type desire and when i can't do that i lose interest in the game pretty quickly so yeah i'll have to read up a little bit about that um company they seem interesting and here we are this is the main feature of uh this week's edition of the magazine uh 10th anniversary of the near series and we see we have a big picture right here of uh yokotaro's character um that's really what you want to call it i'm not really sure uh this has got a timeline of where the series has gone and everything it looks like they've had like orchestra performances and stuff like that um this is going into more information about the uh the games um some of you may not know that um the very first game that came out um was for uh sorry xbox 360 and playstation 3 um the game was different on those two platforms when they brought it to america they decided to just bring the same game on both platinum or both platforms but in japan uh they had different titles and they were different games uh one of them i'm not really sure which one was near gestalt oh it probably says right here Yeah, one of them was near Gestalt, and the other one was near Replicant. Okay, yeah. So, for uh, Xbox 360, which was a very small seller in Japan, that one got near Gestalt, and then the PlayStation 3 got near Replicant, which I would think probably did a lot better. Uh, we can see Yoko Taro's face here. Uh, what is this? Near Yona. I think this is still information about the first game, just maybe like a character. Ni uh, Kan Kane and Emil. Okay, so the Yokotaro face is actually something called Emil. Uh to be honest, I never really or I never played these games. Um so they're just going into maybe famous characters in the series. The next game in the series was near uh near Otomata. Otomata is how how it's pronounced in Japanese. So um yeah, I guess we'll go with that. Um that came out in 2017 for PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. Um so got information about the characters, beautiful screens in here. So yeah, um I think for people that love this series, yeah, they're uh probably going to be uh, pretty happy with this issue uh the next thing they talk about is theatrical orchestra so in japan a lot of games a lot of popular games will get an orchestral release that will travel somewhat across the country usually um it will be um it tends to be like Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto, uh, maybe uh, uh, Fukuoka might get something like that. So uh, it's got the set list here. Looks like they do sixteen numbers and then an encore question mark question mark. Um, what is this? looks like just goods did they have a, yeah it looks like a, a musical or a play maybe yeah yeah it's a it looks like a play yoro yoruha yoruha 
what is it uh Madai Yoruha Maidai Maidai um Oh, this is coming. Okay. Oh no, never mind. Uh, March, March twenty twenty. Oh no, they're having a new version. It originally came out. Uh, twenty fourteen, October twenty fourteen, and then there's a new version that came out in March twenty twenty. Oh, and they had to cancel it because of the coronavirus. And it says that 329, yeah, which was a month and some change ago, they did a Nico Nico presentation of it. Yeah, you had to pay money for it, but what? Hold on. Yeah, it does say pay money. Hmm. So yeah, and here's some goods from the uh, having to do with the uh, the play. Uh, near replicant. Near reincarnation is coming to phones. The near replicant looks like the next uh, next uh, version of the of the game. But it doesn't look like either one of those has an announcement date. Um, yeah, near reincarnation is coming to Android, iOS, and replicant is coming to PC and Xbox One. Uh, here's some interviews with uh, people, Yoko Taro, among other uh, people that had something to do with the game. Wall of text, wall of text. Interesting screens here. Looks like this is a woman that was in the uh, in the play. Information about her. Bunch of near goods here. I thought that this uh, umbrella looks pretty cool, but then I looked at the price and I'm like, I ain't paying fucking three, 30 bucks for a damn umbrella. I don't even use umbrellas, and when I do, I tend to leave them wherever I go. So Now, I've only once bought a pair of sunglasses that were more than like 5 or $10, and when I did have those, um, I did hold on to those sunglasses for years and so maybe just the idea of having something that's expensive would make me remember to keep a hold of it so there is that to think about uh what else where are we going to go next smartphone game smartphone game nothing nothing here's the indie game of the week uh regions of ruin um Poiski Productions, Box Games. Um, looks like it's uh, about ten bucks on PC. Looks interesting, a little Terraria esque, just by looking at some of these screens. Uh, just says action for the genre. Uh, once again, we got a DLC item in in the magazine for uh grand blue fantasy so here's an interesting thing uh gunosia gunosia wait did i just talk about that earlier in the magazine yeah the best indie game gunosia 
So this is that game that they they uh, gave an award to at the award show. Um, looks like it came out for Switch and Vita April 30th. So just a few days ago. Um, they must have uh, had advanced copies for the people that voted there. Uh, what do we got? It says it's an adventure game. Uh, 25 bucks or so. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, if you're hearing my fan wind up, I apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to have to find some information about it, uh, out about this. It looks pretty interesting. Uh, Gnosia. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. Uh, indie Archives. They usually have like a little bit about Indie Archives in every issue. doesn't really interest me too much. Um, other iPhone game, mobile game. Here's information, more information about Grand Blue Saga. Okay. Uh, Grand, Grand Blue Fantasy. Yeah. So uh, here's an update on Splatoon. Uh, talking. Strength up. Yeah, I'd have to sit here and read this, but um, I didn't know that they were still adding things to uh, um, Platoon. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Like I said, I'd have to sit here and read it. Information about Iceborne. I mean, Famitsu definitely goes into the older games that have come out and uh, definitely keeps um, keeps information fresh on them coming out all the time. Um, Okay, so there's what we're going to save for the last part. Um, anything else we want to talk about? Uh, here's uh, information about sales for Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch Lite, and talking about how um, that might be pushed with um, uh, Nintendo Switch sales. Yeah, this is all marketing and sales news. Hashimura! Selling us uh, Rebotan D. Gotta keep them there. Two sexy game. They have a stripe so we don't see your boobies. Alright, so my favorite part of this uh, the episode, besides the, uh, the um, top 30, is talking about snacks. Japanese snacks. All this good stuff that they sell in convenience and stuff like that, convenience stores. So let's take a look at the top. Uh, Family Mart has a uh, matcha and milk uh, waffle cone. Uh, I'm not a big fan of matcha, so it doesn't really appeal to me. Uh, Mini Stop has a new Hollow Hollow that is um, white, um, white peach flavored. Uh, over here, uh, Family Mart has a uh, melon pond that is uh, butter flavored with whipped cream inside. Um, uh, Mini Stop has um, uh, seaweed and salt chicken here. Uh, uh, this Lawson bread here is a piece of bread that has it says a chicken stick so maybe you think like a, a chicken tender or chicken nugget stuck in the bread um, uh, up here there's an onigiri um, ebira so shrimp mayonnaise and dayu dayu is um, the spiced oil that they put in a lot of ramen where ra ra yu ramen so um 
that da yu i mean that's the, the name ramen comes from using that da da yu within the the ramen um so yeah that sounds that sounds kind of nice uh down here lawson has a Uh, small little um, cream puffs that have um, chocolate in them. So it says uh, deep, deep chocolate taste. Um, what do we have here? Uh, a yakisoba looks pretty good. Uh, shibide. Ma nantoka. And it's the name of a, a shop that's in Tokyo and Ginza, it says. Yeah, it looks like it's supposed to be spicy. Next one down, we have uh, Nebo. Not sure what what Nebo is. Not really sure what that is. Yeah, Niboshi. Niboshi soup. I'm not really sure what Niboshi is. I'll have to look it up. Uh, last one down here is Pork Zero. So there, it's a, it's a pork ramen with zero pork. I don't know how they're going to pull that off, but I might need to try it. Um, here we have sour cream and onion, uh, strong flavored chips. I've never had a sour cream and onion chip in Japan that I've liked. Um, down here we have uh, habanero. Um, Okaki, Baku Okaki. I'm not really sure what Okaki is. I think it's a, a small little rice cracker. I think. Um, and then the last one down here is uh, Wagyu steak and um, garlic. I actually got these chips a few days ago, and they're pretty good. Um, steak or beef flavored chips tend to be all right. Um, yeah, they're not, they're not the greatest thing in the world, but yeah, they're, they were, they were pretty good. I, I'm glad that they had the garlic flavor and the garlic flavor wasn't too overpowering. Um, I've definitely had gar garlic flavored chips here that have like knocked my ass off. So, so there you go. That was this week's issue of Famitsu. Um, yeah, I'm glad that we were, uh, back to normal normal issues uh we got our weekly top 30 so and it looks like i kept uh, this episode right around 30 minutes so um yeah i'm still playing uh animal crossing uh i've uh, actually been getting a lot of help i sold my uh, turnips last week for a tidy profit pretty happy about that um last night i played D and D until midnight and i didn't get home until after my store was closed and so i wasn't able to do my daily quests in animal crossing and uh, uh i just went out on uh one of my discord servers and asked if somebody had let me in their town and luckily most of the people on my discord server are from america and so this guy let me in and yeah i think it it shows you know how how good the community right now is being around animal crossing and I think it also shows that in some ways Nintendo has been right. Now, don't get me wrong, they've been wrong in so many ways about their approach to online, but in some ways they've been very much right in their approach to online because um, I think that they make talking in um, Animal Crossing such a strange process that i think it keeps a lot of people from actually talking and i think in some ways this is really good and so 
you know, you go out to your Discord server and you ask someone to let you on their island. And I always pull up the uh, the uh, Switch app on my phone, and I do write in there like, "Hey, nice island. Hey, thanks for inviting me. Here's a little tip for you. That kind of stuff." And I sometimes I'll get an answer back. Sometimes I won't. And you know that's fine like i i really don't need people to come and uh talk we d we don't need to have a huge conversation just because you opened your town and you let me in uh to you know purchase something at your store or to sell my um sell my turnips um now i did i did come come into contact with the the turnip selling community out on twitter and that was a horrifying experience I learned quite a few things. I learned that a good percentage of them are scams. I learned that most people just want to get more followers on Twitter. Um, what else did I learn? I learned that if you hashtag turnips or even write turnips, that you're going to get a lot of eyes and a lot of comments on your uh your tweet and i actually uh i got caught with this one person that said that she had high turnips and then i met dm'd her and she came back you know 10 minutes later and was like ha 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 i don't have high turnips it's like you just want to see the world burn don't you so whatever so I did. I did find someone, a kind-hearted person that day, that did let me into their town. I was able to sell my turnips for over six hundred. I think it was like six forty or something like that. And I netted myself a tidy profit, left a tip, and that's exactly how it should be. It should be easy. Just ripping off a bandaid, you know. Get in. Have a person say, "Hey, I got high turnips. Get into their town. Let them open their door. Go in. Good to go. Like you know." And like the dodo codes are great because like you can meet out how many people you send it to at once, like send it to four people, let them come in. Once they leave, send it to four more. And it's up to you how many people you want to let in. So yeah, I, uh, yeah, trust me, there are a lot of bad things to, uh, to about Nintendo's online services, but I think there's some good points to them as well. So. All right, so this has been an episode. Uh, we, uh, I hope everybody has a nice golden week who's in Japan. I hope you have some time off. Hopefully, um, if you've been going to, uh, if you've been going to uh, work, hopefully you enjoy your time off. If you haven't been going to work, I hope you continue um, making and producing quality stuff. Um, all right, so we're going to call that an episode. Uh, my name is Paul Smith. Uh, check out my website, owrgames.com. One Word Review Games is the title. Um, uh, check out my check, – check, uh, check out OWR Games out on Twitter. Uh, you can follow the Mixer channel, uh, YouTube, Facebook, all OWR Games. Uh, Twitch is actually OWR underscore games. Uh, what else? Um, what else? Oh, yeah, my personal Twitter is SOPACHUCO13. Check me out there. Uh, that's where I post most of my, uh, my personal stuff. And uh, I've been posting some more articles and stuff like that on my website. And archives usually go up on... Uh, youtube on a weekly basis this one will go up later later today so please follow me and uh, uh give me critiques anything like that if you got any questions um if you want me to buy any kind of japanese snacks and we can do a little muk mukbang or mukbang or whatever whatever it's called where you eat your snacks on on air and people are sexually aroused or whatever whatever the fuck happens let me know that in a comment or something and yeah we'll do this again next week with the new issue of Amitsu. so thanks again for joining me uh i'll be live right around this same time next week uh this is not i usually go live around nine nine to ten a.m japanese time so 
whatever time that is where you're at. So join me then and check out the archive on YouTube. That'll be posted later. All right. Hey, lovey. Have a good one. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.